Welcome back to Quran Logics, where I take a very quick look. Uh, no, it's not so quick this time. Unfortunately, I know I said I'm going to keep them short and to the point, but this one requires a bit of background. So this one's going to be yeah, just a little bit longer. But I take a look at logical thinking used and apply it in the Islamic Quran. Now, if the author of the Quran is a perfect God, the book should be perfect and not contain errors or contradictions or for sure not be illogical if the author of the Quran is indeed a perfect God. And if it is, it should deliver perfect results, as in perfect craftsmanship. If the author of the Quran is indeed a perfect God, everything should be as expected and require no fine-tuning or functionality checks. It shouldn't require a context. Every sentence, every, every single thing should be perfect. So which is it? competence or test? That is my question today. Is my expectation justified? And is it logically consistent that a perfect God requires testing of the its, her, its, whatever creation? The claim made in the Quran is that this creator God is perfect, the best of everything, the best of all creators. But in this video, I, a puny hominid, look at the central book of Islam where the Islamic creator God makes claims which do turn out to be totally illogical. I'm talking about blatant contradictions when looking at the attributes of the Islamic creator God and the concept of what the Quran calls a test. Now, multiple issues arise when looking at the claims around humans and our reason for being created which is to worship this creator who creates us without asking us, gives us life in order to be tested as a form of worship. I know, it's totally crazy. Okay, let me explain why I call it crazy. Now, before I start, I need to point out that Islam is built on a number of assumptions, okay? And there's nothing wrong with it, but there are. Now, Muslims assume and believe that there is some sort of creator God and that their God can be detected and verified, if not directly through scientific observation, then through personal inference. As is the case for everyone, Muslims don't know the origin of the universe. So, instead of getting to work and finding out, they create the fairy tale of a creator God who must have created it somehow. The same goes for the origin of life or consciousness. Then they make the assumptions that this creator must be clear of temporal, physical or spatial attributes, must be unique, timeless, eternal, personal, have a mind, a will, immense power, intelligence and knowledge, along with perfection. Now, that's what I call an entire mountain of assumptions. But this is stated with confidence and certainty. Can any one of these be demonstrated or tested? No, don't be stupid. No, don't be stupid. <laughs> there are many, many more assumptions. Like that a city called Mecca existed at the time, which, if we compare the description with the text, with reality, is impossible. Like there was a person named Muhammad, who was the single source of all the Islamic texts, the entire Quran, a book assumed to be of divine origins, transmitted via this Muhammad character, a text assumed to be, without inconsistencies, contradictions or mistakes, a perfect oral transmission, assuming that it has not changed over time. When checked and tested, none of this turns out to be the case. But still, Muslims assume that the texts transmit perfect instructions on how to lead your life even when they don't. Where science is assumed to be limited somehow and inferior to the descriptions in the Quran. The assumed creator God is assumed to have created the first man and woman, where they are the single source of all mankind, which when checked with today's knowledge of biology is impossible, but it is assumed to be the case anyway. Muslims assume that there were thousands and hundreds of thousands of messengers all over the planet and all messengers and prophets spread the same identical message. This God they assume exists was unable to provide for people in the first place. 
Muslims assume that the all-powerful and all-knowing God demands constant worship and that his prophets were of perfect character, which they were not. Stories around these people are assumed to be true and a reflection of reality. And when it is stretched beyond anything real, it is assumed that miracles are possible and used to be quite frequent at some stage. So, talking ants, flying donkeys, slapping a corpse with a piece of steak will revive it. These are all assumed to be plausible descriptions of reality. And finally, long before I have run out of assumptions necessary to accept Islam, Muslims assume that their life is some sort of a test. A test developed by their assumed creator God who creates everything using the assumed perfect craftsmanship of the best of all creator gods. And when this is finished, knowing what the future holds for everything created has to test what has been created. Huh? If I open a Quran and look for the expression all powerful, I get quite a number of matches showing that the Quran says that this Allah, this Islamic creator God is pretty powerful, i.e is capable of physically getting anything and everything done. If I now do the same for the expression all-knowing, I get even more matches. So the claim made in the Quran is that this God is not only equipped with immense power, as we've just seen, but is also equipped with all available knowledge to do things, everything in the right way. So it knows in advance everything about the past, the present and future. And in addition, the Quran says several times that this creator God has a high level of competence. Bless Allah, best of creators, forsake the best of creators, Allah the creator of all things. This results in somewhat high expectations regarding craftsmanship, competence and level of excellence. So if I now take the claim that every human being is handcrafted individually, ignoring the use of different and contradictory materials, which I've handled in my embryology video, the result is created humans. Not through natural processes we can detect and check, but exclusively created using bespoke materials in the full knowledge of their future with every detail of their lives, including time and means of death, being known already during the creation process. This is further substantiated in the secondary literature, where we have statements regarding the creation in the form of an embryo like here, after 120 days of pregnancy. Allah sends an angel to write four items, sends the deeds, time of death, means of livelihood, whether he be rich or blessed and so on. And you can find this repeated several times in different narrations with varying elements, but all deemed to be authentic by Islamic scholars. Now, this is like an engineer who develops a car tire to be able to handle a speed of, let's say, 210 kilometers for an hour, and that lasts for, let's say, 30,000 kilometers. He thinks he is the best of all engineers and knows exactly what happens with the tire and when. He relies on his expertise and competence and openly boasts about it. Only when he decides to take the arrogant approach and goes ahead, produces and launches the tires, they fail when they are tested by, you know, by being in operation. Just like humans where things like teeth, hearts, lungs, kidneys, hips, knees and so on, they all require replacing. Can the engineer of a tire now punish the tire for his own failing? He miscalculated, let's say, the tensile strength of the wire used in the belt. And this simply developed the whole plethora of problems. So who is to blame for the failing and incompetence on display here? The tire? Allah, the best of all creators, creates humans, knows full well in advance they will fail, produces them anyway, and punishes them for his own incompetence. Okay, this demonstrates, I think, the first logical problem here. The second problem is even worse and much more grave, actually. Because this best of all creators creates human beings 
with his own hands, having full knowledge of their destiny in advance while creating them as described in the Hadith above. Then, actively hardens the heart of some of them, which is Quranic for preventing information updates into the brain, because they didn't know the brain is for thinking when the Quran was written. Okay, so yeah. Knowing full well that this hardening of the heart, I'll just keep this expression, is preventing information flow, that this will be their doom, as in eternal torture in hell. Knowing this in advance, and still going ahead with this creation, creation destined to go to hell, for eternal punishment, without a chance to change this, or unable to change this due to the cruel intervention of this creator God. This is what I call a monster. But it still gets worse. Because according to the Quran, this creator who knows everything and in advance, who will create humans only to put them into hell, still has the cheek to tell these humans they have a choice and this life is a test. As though there is no advanced knowledge and a human can theoretically change their mind, do something different and prove Allah wrong. Showing up Allah as being clueless and a bumbling amateur, which of course is not allowed to be possible. So this cruel, clueless creator expects his followers to blindly accept this logical contradiction. And they do, without knowing what will be tested and based on what, using which criteria, without any idea what the pass mark is and what definitions for the correct actions are. Now, if performing a ritual is worth five points, does raping a sex slave get you ten? Does meticulously documenting the first two steps before beating your wife bring you a bonus? Is Muhammad's advice of selling a slave more righteous than the Quranic advice of freeing one? Nobody, especially not Muslims, knows. So they get creative. They come up with five pillars and six beliefs or faith articles for this and in their ideology. And Qadar is one of them, a word for power, but used to describe human fate or predestination the divine definition of the future in Islam, justifying this brutal mind control. They come up with apologetics along the lines of a teacher testing pupils, or even worse, people like Mufti Menk telling us we need to see the evidence of our failing ourselves. But he constantly contradicts himself, even within seconds. And here he seems pretty confused. So that was not in your capacity, it's Qadr, it's Taqdeer meaning, it is destiny, it was destined that I was going to go through this, indeed, I had no role to play, Allah will not question me where I didn't have a choice, but where Allah's given you a choice, you chose, Allah holds you responsible, that does not mean he doesn't know what was going to happen. But this is silly, a teacher does not create us pupils and knowing in advance that we will fail the test without being able to change anything. Let me ask a question to Muslims, can your God be surprised by anything? Now, with a, with a teacher, we can learn and pass the test, changing our destiny, even surprising the teacher. We are informed what material will be tested and along which criteria. We are tested based on information given to us, information provided in a language we understand, using words that make sense and are precise, not requiring individual interpretation and guessing. Now, when we're confronted with a fork in the road, drivers can choose between going left, going right, turning back, or not going at all, and then changing their mind if they choose to do so. With Allah, none of this is possible. Changing our mind or changing our destiny would automatically prove that Allah did not know this. And if Allah did know, then how is this a change of destiny? So all we can do is follow the left fork and continue up the straight path ahead, whether we want to or not. Forcing drivers to take a left fork and then punishing them, telling them they took a left when the right would have been the correct choice. Come on, that's downright cruel. Also, a teacher does not intentionally withhold information or the capability to pass the test in the first place. A teacher does not block or harden hearts or block the brain using our more modern science-based knowledge regarding hearts and brain functionality. 
Now, the cruel and brutal message in what this Menka is propagating is only to make us feel as though we've done something wrong on top of going into eternal torture. So it's our own fault, which it is not. So we have emotional abuse too. And this makes Islam look like these brutal and abusive mind control sects we've seen so often in the past, where followers are like mindless and spineless zombies following their leader or leaders. So either we are in control of our destiny and Allah is not intentionally blocking us, which means the Quran is horribly wrong, or the Quran is right and we are robots who are randomly selected for heaven or hell depending, again, according to the Quran, on the whims of our incompetent creator. Either way, it's a logical nightmare and I have no idea why anyone can fall for this. All right, thanks for taking an interest in the video. And if you like, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Sure, by all means. Do me a favor, tell me why. So I know what I did wrong. Thanks. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.